let me know if there is any questions uh, with last session so we will take it from there so uh, yesterday how i was telling you is that uh, step one to this is load data so you go to uh, load data and then uh, if you want to create a new table okay i will just do a quick review of five minutes of whatever you thought yesterday all right uh, so when you take a table there are two types of table in service now everything is a table right so the tables that you create are also stored in a table right that table name is sysdb object right so incident change problem all of these are table but when you create the table that creation components is there right that itself will be stored in another table which is nothing but tables table uh, the backend name of the tables table is sysdb object right so here you can see all your uh, incident change right so you have a uh, uh, keyword starting with change you have 15 tables in uh, in the database and you have problem all of these tables and uh, not only it has uh, um, it has the main tables it has input set tables also so for example um, yeah see let me show you the tables that are extended from task so what i'm doing is show matching of task removing all other filters you remember right for example if you have developed more than one filter if you want to remove a specific filter just go to that filter just exactly before that you have this uh, uh, you know icon right so just click on to that you do not have to expand and remove and all so this is kind of a shortcut in so, so in service now we have 41 tables that are extended from task table so all these any for any of these 41 tables if you take it will have all the fields configurations uh, notifications everything inherited from task table on top of it it can have its own configurations as well you remember right the dictionary override concept and the custom notifications and all of that now similar to this you have an uh, you know extend table called import set row so whichever table that says import set row it means that these are um, custom tables uh, import set tables these are staging table right staging staging means uh, for example if for any type of integration or data sync you don't want the third party uh, system to be directly uh, you know synced with service now so that uh, uh, you don't know which one is updated by what and all of that so instead of that you will have a middleman a staging table and you will populate all the data into the staging table which is also called as input set table which are nothing but we have 11 in the system right now and going forward we can create even 100 also doesn't matter and these are only staging table and uh, it will be available only for admins and the records in these tables also would get auto cleaned auto removed every once in a month by the system itself you don't have to do anything and the data from this staging table will jump into main table right now how do you load data into the staging table that you will have to use uh, this load data ui page so in that uh, if this is the first time you're going to create a staging table you will choose create table otherwise you will choose existing table and will show you all the list of existing staging tables that you have so yesterday we created up a table called uh, input staging user table right yeah input staging user table is a table that we uh, we created so you 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 know set up like where, what is the source of your data is it a you know a manual file or is it from a external data source for now i'll teach you file because yesterday i told you about field or file only so i'll again explain that alone and then you do a submit so the moment you do a submit if you look at this table you will see that all the data are populated so this is one way to look at so it says that inserts update and all of that right so you open up all of these links in new new tabs so first one is input sets so it goes to the input sets for this data load
and the other one is loaded data whatever is the data it, it nothing but it takes you to this table here right the second one is loaded data is taking you to the input set table that you just created like it was already there yeah and yeah so this import set table it will tell you for the same staging table what are the past history like for example same excel file on this staging table we loaded it twice yesterday and today uh, and it was processed as well today we just loaded and we have not even processed those steps are pending this this you will, this data you will see it in loaded data uh, import sets so all these you open up in a new tab if you open up here itself everything will get collapsed so all these whatever you want to see open up in a new tab so import set gives you an historic data of uh, what is the status of your import set and this loaded data will take you to the import set table itself and you can see the data and third one is create transform map in our case we have already created but if people have not already created they can use this place and create but in our case we have already created and third one, fourth one is run transform when we give run transform it shows the existing transform map that it was already created log is whatever is the logs that uh, has been developed since morning right created on today it comes up here if any errors or something like that it comes up here any exceptional errors now these are the shortcuts to see the data right otherwise the proper way to see is load data is to load your uh, file you have a module called transform map right so under administration you have transform maps so you can see all the transform maps that has been created so far by the system or by individuals like us. So all these comes up here and uh, it should also have um, our tables created as well. Right, this one is ours. We created a new transform map called map user data. Right, any questions? Uh, this is just a overview of what we've learned yesterday. Any questions? Okay, so I will proceed to explain each and every component of now there's a checkbox called compi empty fields, right? So what does that mean is so let us say for Vaishnavi, I'm keeping the email as empty. Okay. saving this file so for Vaishnavi I'm uh, letting uh, email as empty so hello yes please I have one question if we write code and if you want to check it uh, where can we check it like how to run it this section transform script section transform okay. script is the place where you want to write the code and uh, validation that will come up I will explain each component, finally uh, these, and finally the transform script. Okay. Yeah. So let us say you have a empty field in your uh, um, Excel data or data source, and you want that also to be copied. You have to make sure that you enable this one. Right. So for example, let us say this is not enabled, and you load this Excel. Now this empty field will not be copied because Vaishnavi's record is already created in the system. And it has the username so and so, and Vaishnavi's name as an email ID already filled in the system. But this field is not checked. Uh, Vaishnavi's email ID will not be cleared out in the system. Based on yesterday's import, it was already populated, right? It will remain as such. It will not be cleared out. But when you enable this, and after that, if you load it, it will be cleared out, right? So that is what copy empty fields represents. And then um, run script is something uh, you want to, uh, you know, put up a log or you want to do a validation before this transform map starts. So that kind of scripts you will write here. I will show you with an example. Um, and if you ask me what is the difference between this run script and this one is, so this one is component wise. I'm opening in a new tab so that I don't want to mess this uh, uh, form. So I do a right click here and I click open new window. Okay, so it takes me here. So I'll click on new so that I can show you what are the different types of transform scripts we have. We have these many options, right? 
So all start is uh, when you say transform map, uh, there is a transform like let us say 100 records are there Excel. Okay, before that 100 records are to be processed, there is one few seconds, right? Whatever you want to validate before even first single record is uh, you know processed, that you want to validate or process or do anything, that and all you will write it in on start, right? Whereas on before is this will be working for every single row of your Excel. For example, you have 100 rows in your Excel. Before processing every single row, this on before script will run. Like uh, row number one, before processing it will run. Row number two, before processing it will run. So it will run 100 times. Whereas on start will run only once before processing your uh, entire batch that one second is there right in that time only once your excel can have lack of records excel can have one record ten record doesn't matter for a whole batch only once at the initial time that is what you call it as on start on before is on before of every single record execution similarly on after is just the opposite of on before after processing of every single record in your excel you want to do something that is what you do good in your on after on complete is uh, it is there's the combination of on start right uh, once your entire batch is done you want to uh, run some scripts so that you will put it in on complete for example let us say you want to send an email uh, before this uh, this entire batch starts right then you will use a on uh, start uh, on start transform script and you will uh, call a event and trigger a notification all of that let us say you want to uh, uh, you want to send an email uh, once the entire set is completed then you will use on complete right or else uh, uh, you have a requirement where you want to validate few things before processing each row then you will use on before and you want to do any something after processing each row it is on after right now um, okay there's something called on choice create on foreign insert or on reject just hold on for this i'll explain another bunch so that you understand now in field maps what is the main things you see source field target field right what is the source field source field is nothing but the fields that are available in your import staging table right whatever the fields that are from stores table is called source field whatever the field is there from target table user table right those fields are called target fields now in addition to that there are few other columns there's something that says colors and also there are few other columns which are hidden in form layout let me bring everything to the right okay i'll bring everything to the right now um yeah you can ignore about this application created created by not okay otherwise okay i will tell you what is this call as call as is let us say um, uh in for every table you have a unique key right for example in user table you can either say the user id is unique or email is unique so uh, you can have multiple uh, uh, you know you can have multiple records with the same name with the same name students know i can create 10 records also whereas email has to be unique or at least user id has to be unique because why user id has to be unique because this is the login uh, credentials right you cannot give same username to two different people and two pass you know two different password that will not work out so this has to be unique so what we can define in our system is whatever we feel as unique we will give coalis true so uh, whenever you see this field coalis in back of your mind you have to think that oh unique right the translation in your mind is it has to say unique and uh, um, and there is an uh, you can make multiple fields also unique unique for example when i say multiple fields it's like combination for example um 
right so i can say in my system that um, you can have uh, two people like okay there is already something like this in the system mm. okay so here what i'm trying to do when uh, i am making two fields coalesce is, is uh, only uh, if both the fields uh, unique is true and then system will consider as a unique otherwise it will think oh it is a different different record meaning now i have this row right vishnu dot snow vishnu snow vishnu snow at abc dot com right when i keep um, when i keep user name as uh, unique uh, what will happen is it will uh, look for if the if in uh, uh, in service now user table do i already have a, a record wherein vishnu dot snow is mapped against user name if yes it will go and update the record if no it will go and insert a new record right when i have username alone as coalis so coalis determines what is that one field uh, which makes you to be sure that whether it's an insertion of a record or an update or update of a record uh, to be very precise i think i can show you with the incident table okay so we don't have to worry about any of these columns okay let us imagine we are trying to push data like this and uh, finally we will have one more uh, uh, of our own like we'll say Two double zero six six something like that. Okay, and it can be any short description. Um, the caller can be anybody. I'm just copying pasting uh, from any of the data. We will leave. Uh, we will leave assignment group and assign to SMT. Not a problem. Let us try to load this data. Uh, so for incident table, this is the first time we're doing. So let's do it new. So we'll say that oh, I want to create a new import set table. Uh, import incident, and I'll choose the file. And uh, as I told you, sheet number is one, header row is one already. So you don't have to change that. Let that be. There are 67 records that were inserted, right? Inserted as in inserted in the import set table, not in your incident table. It was only inserted in the import set table. Now you need to create a transform map. So um, incident mapping. source table and target table is incident save and here i'll just do auto map matching fields because i know that see this data itself i got it from exporting the excel of the existing incident table right so 
uh, it is not that i changed the you know column label or anything so i will not have any difficulty in uh, mapping the fields so i don't have to you know seek the help of mapping assist i can just trust on the auto map matching fields so it says field maps were created right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make incident number 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 is the uh, unique so i will mark incident number as coli is true okay so now that i have marked incident number as coli is true if you see we have how many uh, data in the incident table we have 60 uh, 67 uh, rows but if you see there will be uh, only one record inserted and uh, other uh, 66 66 record i uh, will be either updated or ignored in this case it will be ignored why ignored is system did not find any change between these short descriptions or whatever values and whatever is already there in the system whatever you're receiving and whatever is already there in the system wants to update it so only you will find there is only one insert of this record right so we have created this let's do transform so it tells you that it is using the transformation map incident mapping and i click on transform okay so i go to this import set it will tell me uh, you know the statistic reports In inserts one and you have updates to and ignored 64 okay so i'm curious to know what are the updates let me filter down with ignored right for ignore what it says no field value changes no field value changes right which is fine um let us take the updated one row number two and row number 52 this incident and this incident what did we change in this just one minute ago based on our excel transformation previously it was can't access sfa software and it is now again this thing maybe i'm not sure maybe when we downloaded and we just when we kept it here right we might have added uh, some extra space to it so that extra space also system considered as a change of uh, character length and uh, the wordings <coughs> excuse so it took that as a, a, a change in the field and it recognized that and it got updated. The other one is, okay, this one is closed, INC002. Row number 52, it said, right, in the... All right, so five months ago, this ticket was closed, but uh, uh, the email, uh, uh, okay, triggering the email, but it anyways does not have anything to do with Coalis. So what I'm, am I trying to explain with regard to Coalis is that when you have that specific field as Coalis marked true, wait a minute. Okay, this is the incident mapping is the T map that we created. Okay, so we had set. So we have this field mappings in this and uh, we have given number as Coley is true, right? So based on that system did not make any uh, new insert, it only updated. So let us assume I'm turning this to false. Here, what will happen is you can try this in your system. If I reload that same Excel again, I will have another six set of 66 records newly inserted. So that is the you know work of uh, um, that is the work of Coalies. And one more thing is uh, I was talking about multiple Coalies, right? 
so i can do like this as well like i can make these two combination number and short description combination as uh, uh, both of them true so what happens is let us say i have this this one is already loaded and new, newly created right so with the same number i will put different short description i'm saving this record now do you expect the system to create new record or not it will create the reason is because uh, it is no longer number is the only coalesce uh, short description is also become a coalesce so it will look for both combination for example it will look in the system with the same incident number with the same short description do i have a record already in my system right and the uh, system will say yes you have so it will not make any insert fine uh, it will ask in the system do i have the same incident number yes next question is do i have with the same short description for this incident number the answer is no so that is considered as an insert it is considered as a new record so it will insert so that is the game of multiple uh, uh, you know queries uh, have happening and um, uh, this is fine for uh, you know fine for uh, fields like uh, uh, short description incident number these are string fields right but what happens with uh, uh, reference fields like caller assignment group and assigned to so those are you call it as referencing fields now um, okay so let us say you have a priority field right in priority what are the drop downs you have you have p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 only this much right let us assume i'm trying to put up in my uh, this thing um no severity null priority okay imagine i'm trying to put up in my system saying that nil priority let me tell it all of the records to avoid confusion you will take only few records okay we're taking only four records in one of those records i'm putting priority as nil priority but if you see in your incident table in this drop down you have nothing called uh, nil priority right uh, let me do a right click show choice list right click show choice list right i'm filtering down based on english language um, label these are the available labels i have in my system one critical two high there is nothing that says nil priority that is a new word that i'm bringing up on my own now in my t map so the choice action is given as create right so what will happen is if i try to load this data i'm choosing an existing table have i saved this control is saved run transform so which is that incident number that i updated it is 055 let us take let me take you into that i set oh i loaded the data into user table i'm sorry the excel that i had is incident table but uh, uh, mistakenly i loaded the table uh, data into staging user table i should have done it in incident table so i have loaded the data i'm doing run transform
Okay. So based on Coelis, you could see that there is a, a new thing that was already created. Because as I was telling you, we have 55, you know, the incident number as a unique field. We kept two combination, right? We want number also and we want short description also has to be unique. So in that way, you could see that these two fields has been created, but uh, we still see the priority has not been changed. I believe it is because of uh, it is because of the lookup rules. Based on lookup rules, uh, it is not accepting. And then Your voice is not audible. Uh, is it is is it better now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. So I was trying to demo you with the priority, but did not work. The reason is because priorities are being set based on data lookup rules. So instead, as part of this demo, I'm trying to change it in the assignment group and assign to. In uh, one of these records, I put assigned to with random words and an assignment group also with random words, right? Uh, pre previously, it was proper. Some there is one group called hardware. There was some assigned to person called David Lu. But I changed it to something and you could see that it got reflected here as well. Uh, some text change getting reflected in short description is not a big deal because it's just a text, right? But whereas with regard to reference field, it is important, meaning these are the data that are coming from different tables, right? So how could this word has been recognized is the next question. So if you see that uh, because of your, see, you have actually uploaded your data on an incident table only, right? But because of your action, there was a consecutive action which got triggered in user table and there was a user record created with the name as test blah, 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 whatsoever. You could see it here, right? And similarly with assignment group also. So I just kept it like hello as an assignment group name. And you could see that in groups table, there was a new group called hello that got created. Now, um, Imagine a seven group is service desk, okay? And uh, if that name exists in service now, which is fine. That group already exists in fire service now, which is fine. It will take the existing group. If it does not exist and somebody manually, mistakenly, unknowingly, they enter like this, right? Because human errors can happen. At that time, you want to create a new group or you want to send an alert email or you want to... Uh, 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 you know, ignore this entire row. That can be determined based on what is the transform map that you develop. So I'm jumping into our transform map again. So in uh, in choice action, there is a default uh, value saying create, 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 right? So if you no longer want this to be happening, you have to mention it as ignore. Right. When you mention it as ignore, what happens is, um, let us say you're changing the short description in Excel. There's a change in short description identified. There's a change in assigned to identified. Since for assigned to, you gave it as ignore. Since in assigned to, you gave it as ignore. This change in field alone will not be considered. If it is proper service desk, it will consider it. But if it is a foreign insert identified, it will not consider only this field. Whereas if you choose the option reject, reject, reject is there, right? If you mention your choice action as reject at that time, it will not consider any changes of this entire row. 
any questions with regard to what is a coalesce and how do you handle with choice action ignore insert and uh, ignore create and reject all right i take that as a no so you got this right and this coilies you understand what is a coilies so coilies case sensitive as in um, so we here we have given uh, inc so and so this number is already there fine but if i change this to uh, inc right in smaller case uh, does the system has to consider it as a new record or not right like uh you have to identify the characters of the record with the upper case and lower case exactly same as how you have in your system versus how you have in your excel if you want that case uh, uh, you know uh, the case validation then you will enable this one otherwise not required again coil is empty fields for example uh, you are marking short description and as empty and uh, in excel is also empty and in service now is also empty right that you want to consider it as a colleagues or not so that is the uh, thing that is being asked here and this date format uh, will be applicable only if you have a field mapping which is of uh, date and uh, time field for example assignment group is a reference field right priority is a drop down short description is a free text like that you have created updated resolved time closed time these are date and time fields right so let us say you're trying to upload this that data as well so in your excel what is the expected date and time format fed in your excel that you have to mention it here this you can ignore this you can ignore and all okay source table target table you know source script i'll explain you you wait so that is all now um there is a checkbox called source script once you enable a script section opens up so uh, when you receive the data for example so let us say uh, whatever short description you receive uh, there is a requirement that you need to take the only the first uh, three first 12 uh, characters of that like in incident you should not write away copy and paste it instead you have to uh take only the first 20 characters of the short description if there is such requirement then you can use uh this particular use source script so what you can do is variable x is equal to source dot short underscore description dot to um to string dot substring substring of 0 comma 12 which means that it will take only the first 12 characters or digits or spaces whatever the first 12 uh, characters of uh, your uh, short description that you received in your excel source means excel right excel and it will store it in x so whatever you returned in, uh, uh, you know whatever has been returned in x will be written here and only that value will be put into the target field right so uh, you could make use of your uh, where you want to tweak the data and then populate it right so that is all with all these fields now if this is clear i can further jump into transform scripts any questions
okay so let us say you want to uh, maintain a logs in the logs table uh, saying that um, incident incident uh, data transform initiated right just that nothing much only this much i want to do so you can put on start so uh, once whenever whenever this is uh, uh, this transform apps get started once uh, once for every transformation meaning if you have lacks of records in your excel doesn't matter once for the entire batch one time before the starts it will put up a logs in the uh, uh, you know in the uh, log statement table same like that completed i'll do an insert and stay and let us say on before so um in on before uh, instead of just putting log logs validation if uh, source dot short description description dot to string dot index index means contains index of the keyword urgent greater than minus 1 then let us trigger a event an event can further trigger a email or whatsoever this is some random name i'm giving i'm supposed to create a uh, event with the same name import dot incident dot urgent identified urgency identified comma uh, on the incident table comma so this is actually uh, you know triggering uh, the syntax to trigger an event so you will put like a, this is glide system event queue you will trigger this event on which table incident table and these are first and second parameters for now i'm letting these two parameters uh, empty but uh, uh, when we look at uh, notifications in detail i'll explain uh, we had already uh, you know had a uh, you know uh, had a session i think more than two sessions on notification but i have not explained further on the script part right so that all, all is waiting because i want you to uh, understand uh, uh, the events concepts and all and later come into that section so when we jump into that one i will also explain you what is param1 and param2 right so uh, before i process any record and i ident and identify a uh, records short description that says uh, that contains the word urgent then i will trigger this event then this event can further trigger a notification or anything right i'll do an insert and stay now okay on after on after this you can bring up a similar logic like that yeah so i explained you on before on after on start and on complete so you can see on for an insert right for an insert is nothing but uh, what is the difference between insert and for an insert insert means you're trying to insert a record insert means you're trying to insert a record in your incident table because this excel load itself is meant to do yeah insert or update is fine for an update means for an insert means uh, in incident table you have a lot of fields for example you have assignment group field which resides in the group table and you have assigned to field which resides in the user table so because of your excel action there is another foreign table like you know any table apart from incident in this terminology is called as foreign table trying to record insert a record in assignment group or assigned to all these are uh, called as foreign inserts and that will also be done only when your um, field mapping choice action says create otherwise it will be uh, you know ignore or either reject it. so let us say in assignment group choice action says insert um you want to allow it but at the same time you want to maintain a log or you want to trigger an email to a specific team to validate it 
something like that at that time uh, you could uh, make utilization of your foreign insert uh, transform script again choice create uh, so reference fields are called as foreign insert this category and all is there right okay so priority we were not able to change it because priority is uh, auto filled based on uh, your data lookup rules based on your urgency and impact but i think i can change my category so category is again a drop drop down field right uh, so if I'm trying to change any choice options and it ends up in creation in creation of a new choice rather than updating the old choice because uh, In service now you can't find something called database e -E -E -E, Right, so it will end up creating a new one on such time. You want to do something then you can make utilization of choice create On reject is Obviously if we define reject here, right? So that's considered as reject, but you don't want to leave it as such. You want to trigger a notification or, you know, put up a log somewhere or in, in fact, put up a comments in the incident. So you can just put like uh, target dot comments is equal to uh, X, Y, Z was rejected because of right. You could leave that message um, on the comments field of the incident. So when you say incident table, you say it as target. You represent it by target. These are the different types of transform maps we have. Any questions in this so far? So as part of exercise, you can try out, uh, you know, one example, uh, applying each of these components. Like you could try, uh, uh, you know, choosing uh, choice action, ignore choice action, reject, create, and all of that. And you could uh, play around with multiple queries. You don't, you, you know, you don't have to necessarily restrict with incident table. You can try this on any other table. Uh, but but in our scenario, when we were trying to play around with priority, we saw that it wasn't working. The reason is because there was a backend logic with data lookup roles, right? So these are a few things that you might have to be uh, uh, pre-informed. So that you spend a lot of your time trying to debug and all of that. Since we already know that priority is uh, handled by uh, um, impact and urgency, we didn't have to spend time in debugging, oh, why it did not get updated and all of that. So this you'll have to be a little more sure. Any questions so far? If not, import set and transformation is done. I will jump into uh, data sources, meaning apart from Excel, what are the different other uh, uh, ways we could bring in uh, data instead of service now? All right, so it's talking about data sources, right? So let me take you to uh, this place and it will tell you what are the different types of data sources that we right now have it in our system. So I think, yeah, I showed this to this batch yesterday. Uh, we have uh, JDBC, LDAP and file. File represents it can be Excel, CSV, what, whatever kind of file it could be. Uh, it accepts only CSV, Excel and formats uh, and JDBC. So there are some. Uh, see uh, we are doing this for demo so we cannot show you a real time uh, some server and uh, and show you how it is being connected instead there are some existing things uh, i can explain what each components means right okay so whenever uh, um, any internal teams of your organization contacts you stating that we have a jdbc uh, you know we have a server database and through JDBC connection, we want to send the data to service now. If they tell you, you need to ask them for very you know, limited information. As in, uh, can you please uh, create an authentication, like uh, create a, a user account and password uh, for our service now in your database and make sure it has access to retrieve files, right? So once that is done, they will share with you the username and password, whatever that data is, you will have to uh, paste it up here and they, uh, you have to ask them. Can you give me your server name? It could be just you know as simple as localhost or it could be dot uh, ad dot xyz dot com xyz or represent might represent a company name Right and uh, if you need all the rows from the table you choose this or if you have a specific query 
then you have to put the query like you know the sql statements right um, uh, you will have all these uh, 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 like uh, if it's an LDAP, you will have a like in service now you have right click copy query, right? Similarly, if in their database also they will have some queries, so you could ask them, uh, ask them like you want to retrieve all the data or just specific data. If specific data, could you please help me with the SQL query? So they will give you the SQL query. You do not have to worry anything about, um, you know, how do I write this data? These and all will be given by that server database team what you have to make sure is that you ask them for all these information you ask them for a username password server and the query and all of this data and what is this use last run data time is that um, it works in a way that when you populate your last data time uh, the records that were updated or inserted after that specific time for example um, sys underscore updated so as I told you, any database for that matter is like a table only, right? So in their table also, like in their database or table also, imagine there is one field called sys underscore updated. And today morning we are running a schedule and it's retrieving all the data. So, so the last updated is uh, today morning 6 o'clock. And again, today evening 6 o'clock, it is again taking another uh, retrieval. You don't want to take all the data from last year, today or last today, yesterday, nothing. You want to take the data that were updated, either updated or inserted only since that last run. What is my last run? Morning. Uh, how do I, uh, uh, which field can I relate to? Probably I can look at sys underscore updated field. So if you want, if you have such a requirement that you don't have to retrieve all the fields, only the uh, retrie uh, retrieve the data that have been updated or inserted um, in the from the last run. Uh, whenever my last run was happened after that were there any inserts or updates only that you have to retrieve then use this particular use last run date time and uh, mention your field uh, here this field is not the service now backend field instead it is the backend field of that this database right whichever table is there you have to ask them for that field fine and uh, we have given the server inside the server you will have multiple databases right uh, when i say database just translate in your mind as uh, tables so you just put on the table name and uh, uh, it might have uh, a few databases might have both some might not have if there is any ask them for it and once this is retrieved what you need is you need to store that information in your import set table right so whatever is the import set table that you created you just put up your, uh, you know, the label name and the backend name. Uh, for example, for uh, this Excel mapping, we created uh, two uh, two tables: import set staging user, import set incident, right? So, like that, we will put the names of the service now table here. That's all done, and same like that, you will have transform maps. Uh, okay, import set table uh, data is there, and uh, uh, that will be stored in this table whatever you input here that needs to be transferred to the actual table of service now right main table as in as i told you import set table is just staging table to store the data uh, you know uh, for a temporary time what is the main table that and all you will define right that that things you will define in, in your um, transformation map and this data source you don't have to do it every time you can uh, do a scheduled imports i will show you the module called scheduled imports it is under system import sets there are some existing uh, scheduled imports uh, you know available uh, i can show it from this example you just have to give have to give a name and give your uh, data source name up here and it's not, nothing you know difficult just similar to Control X, let me check here. Okay, it is it is showing you the data, whichever is active for now. 
Uh, so you choose your uh, data source and uh, if you want to run it as system administrator, leave it empty or if you want to run it against some specific user uh, uh, user profile, you give their profile name and what is the schedule? Is it uh, daily, weekly, monthly, periodically and all of that? And uh, before this import, uh, before this uh, uh, entire, uh, you know, data source thing could happen, you want to do something that you can write it here. Uh, if you uh, if once this complete import is done if you want to do something that you can write it here This is similar to on after sorry on before sorry on start on complete in transform map You have something called on start and on complete, right? So similar to that for scheduled data import you have something called pre script and post script Right uh, so coming with periodicity periodicity of scheduling you have daily weekly monthly um, Daily you give the time weekly is on which day of the week that you give it and of course uh, the time of that and Monthly is on which day like 10th of every month like that and periodically is like every um, You know, let's say 56 hours or every three hours Starting with date we want this to be taken go live only on August 2. So even if it is active in the system, it will not run only after this date is attained from there from this timing after this 830. It will take three hours at that time only it will run. Right. So before running this, you want to validate something. Probably you want this to run every three hours, but not on weekends. So you enable this conditional and here you will check, uh, you know, you will validate your current day of the day. What is the current day of my week? Is it a Saturday or Sunday? If it's Saturday, Sunday, return false. Else return true. Like that you can put your validations here. Right. So now that I've explained you JDBC. Similarly with LDAP also, it's nothing difficult. Uh, here you do not have a server. You do not require credentials and all of that. Right. But you have an LDAP target. LDAP uh, abbreviation itself means light. Uh, lightweight, uh, you know, uh, directory directory access protocol. Uh, LDAP is some, uh, you know, technology or um, a medium to import the data from Active Directory. So in your company, it doesn't matter you have integration or not. Every company will by default have an LDAP integration. So when you say LDAP integration, you don't think anything complex. So in your interviews or uh, in your future projects, somebody says you say you you've done an LDAP integration. It is not complex as the word integration might sound like just that it is about having a data source defined with proper LDAP OU definitions and scheduling it and defining proper import sets right so here uh, it obviously asks me for import set table like where I want to store the data and uh, it asks me for the import uh, uh, target this is where all the data you know all the information is stored in I can um, you know expand and show you what are the components that the LDAP target contains right so as I told you similar to how we have um, our database query and all of that uh, we have uh, uh, you know distinguished name we have filter query all of that in active directory also for this queries and all you don't have to wor worry you just have to ask your ad team uh, that hey can you just give me the distinguished name can you just give me the filter query and what is the query field sam account name is nothing but user underscore name in service now what you have username right that is that is what is called as sam account name in ad I will repeat username and service now is nothing but SAM account name and ID, right? And uh, to which table this data has to go through. So, all these you will define it here. So, this is what you have, uh, you know, with uh, these things. Any questions with the data sources and uh, uh, for data source, we can only demo it for Excel. We will not be able to, you know, demo it with uh, uh, a proper JDBC or LDAP connection because we do not have that resources. Uh, but it is as simple as it sounds actually. You just have to uh, get the query information from the AD team, and uh, uh, there is something called a test connection. If uh, your uh, server details, your uh, uh, query details, everything is correct. 
in test connection you will say that test pass otherwise it will say mid server fail and all of that okay it comes up with the error so usually it, if everything is fine it will say that context connection passed you can try this in your company instance if in case if you are assigned as a role as a developer right if there isn't any question we'll take a break for another 10 minutes and uh, there are some components of the update sets that we have not uh, explored yet uh, so that I can teach it for you today for the rest of the session. Any questions so far? I will just make an overview. We have learned about data sources, JDBC and uh, LDAP data source and Excel file data source. And uh, all the data drops into one section where is nothing but creating an input set table, uh, creating a transformation map and setting up of field mappings and utilization of scripts like on before on after on complete on for and insert and we have uh, in field mapping we have concepts of uh, choice actions whether we want to create them insert uh, reject um, reject or ignore and again you can have options of multiple coalescing and what else did we see Yeah, uh, coil is case sensitive, coil is empty fields and all of that, right? Any questions overall? You definitely give this try in your uh, personal instance and uh, any questions anytime, just feel free to, uh, you know, put me a message on WhatsApp. I'll respond back to that. For now, any questions? All right, I'll go on mute and uh, uh, how about we have a 10 minutes break. Uh, let me know if you uh, require a five minutes, uh, you know, five minutes uh, off screen time or uh, just 10 minutes. Accordingly, we'll take a call. Hello. Yes, Vinkatesh. Can you check the WhatsApp group? Have you put on a message I anything? Yes, yes. I didn't get the required result. Okay, I'm checking. Wait. Okay, so in that incident table the spelling is uh, wrong. You have to put INC I D E N T oh. and you should not put underscore L I S T. So it should be only incident, right? It should be just incident. Okay, thank you. So, if I need to test and, this, uh, uh, and one more thing, where can I? One more thing. One more thing. So, I think the um, uh, you have to uh, look. You have to uh, click on that advanced checkbox. And whatever script you have to uh, you have written, you have to remove from this and put it in advanced script, not with query with script. And one more thing is that GS dot print I demoed it to you because I wanted to show it in uh, background script. Here, what you have to do is current dot add query of current dot add query of society current dot uh, wait, okay no no current dot add query of assigned to um, assign to in comma uh, inside quotes in comma uh, in line number 10 you have that assigned capital to right that uh, variable name you have to put it so there's a lot of corrections required in this one okay I just oh. need to make changes in 13th line right Yes, yeah, there you have to put current dot add query of assigned to comma in comma uh, again assigned to without space that uh, variable name. And uh, that entire script you have to remove it and you have to put it inside advanced script. You are using it in query with script, right? In screenshot, if you see it says query with that uh, script box says query with. In, so you're, it seems like you're using a query with script. Instead of that, you have to put advanced script. And so of course, changing the template. Advanced script. Please enable the checkbox advanced. At that time, you will see a new script box opening up. There, you have to put the script, not here. Oh, okay, got it. 
so can i just copy and paste the entire script in advance yes yes and along with that uh, just uh, uh, bring in the new changes that i told you the incident table and line number 13 and everything yeah sure thank you yeah just take some 10 minutes break for your eyes uh, uh, it's been already one hour of uh, screen time so we will connect back again at 9:25 right right now we're uh, 9:14 so we'll connect back again 9:23 24 9:25 make sure by 9:25 you're all there thank you thanks guys i will go on a break one question one question uh, i yes, checked on advanced box I, mm -hmm. i see two fields apply to and query form where should i write the code okay you see applies to and query from okay okay then if that is the case this this one is correct yeah so i got confused with query from and query with uh, okay this place is correct uh, uh, venkat just that you change your uh, incident table name and uh, change your line number 13 it should work okay thank you all right thank you so everybody connect back at 925 thank you Hey, hi, is everyone back by now? All right. I'm going to share my screen again. right now that we have done with um, data sources and import sets so the few components that we did not uh, you know uh, discuss in the um, update set so now that you know how to create an update set and all of that okay so let us say that as part of this update set development activity 1.0 july 9 right so we have only two customer updates meaning two changes captured in this so there is something that i missed it or either unknowingly uh, i switched from development to default update set and i created this there is two ways that i can bring that into this update set one is I can go to the specific record, just keep a dot, like make some changes, save it, and then re, re save it, right? So at that time, it gets captured in my this update set. What is an other way to do is to uh, you know utilize the customer updates option. Yeah. What I have to do is see if in default you see 754 records, but in that this create to resolve duration is one specific customer update. You want that to be captured in development activity 1.0 update set but unknowingly you captured it in default as i told you either you can go to that record and recapture how is let me refresh the screen so you can see that it is made as a, a current update set because you no longer see a related link called make this as current to double confirm you can refresh your uh, uh, you know home page there it will tell you right development so and so so it means that it is a current update set so whichever you have uh, you know, taken go to can go to that customer update record, and you will see the customer updates in terms of XML and all of that. In here beneath, you have a field called update set, right? So you just change it from default to what is your update set? Development activity, right? Paste it up here. Right click save. Now you could see that this customer update component has jumped from there to here right so you mapped the connection from there to here now this is good what is the other way we could do is let me switch it to default again only then i can show you the other way to do i'm resetting it back to default now you will no longer see it here what is the other way you do is go to the customer update you have a link called show related records so when you click on here it will take you to the exact record whatever you've developed so you're not supposed to change anything in the script or change any of the field which might mess up 
uh, otherwise you can make util utilization of the description or some comment fields right so i can keep some dot here dot dot or so, you know to type something here because this is considered as a change in the configuration like i'm changing something but it is not harm harmful it is like harmless change so i have kept a dot dot here and uh, before i save it i can show you that it is no longer available in development update set so i'm going to save this whatever i did now even keeping a dot is also changed right so you could see that it gets captured in the update set this is what you call it as recapturing in the update set that you want so this is the update set that i want but anyhow i missed it to uh, uh, develop a functionality in that update set but okay fine you need not recreate that functionality instead make sure you will recapture that particular uh, you know that particular record through keeping some dot or small changes a harmless change and using your current update set this is one thing and uh, 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 one way is the other way is as i told you open each one of the component and manually change the update set column other way is in listed it also you can directly do meaning there is a related link right i do a right click open new window and here you see a column called update set i can do a bulk change so i click on one of these i press shift and i press either up arrow or down arrow i will put it under my development activity update set right now that i can see it gets six more 3 plus 6 9 right this is one thing now um okay so let us say i uh, you have i have development update set and tst dev2 right there are five customer updates here you can choose to merge these two update sets and put it into one update set generally you will do a merge um, when you do a merge what will happen is so let us say it has nine records it has five records so when you merge it it will become 9 plus 5 uh, there will be one merged update set final update set it will have 9 plus 5 uh, 14 records but you can ask me what is the difference i can just you know in uh, in i can go like this and instead change this into development right why should i do an option of merge what merge does is um okay let us say this is my metric definition right and i updated it 2 minutes ago let me open that again let me mark this as a current update set this dev v2.0 right i will mark this as my current set and then i will go and few some more you know things in that so uh, imagine this is developer 1 like uh, um, uh, you know mr x who is in the development team and this is updated by this is created by mr uh, y who is also in the development team the, this guy got a requirement this guy also got a requirement but uh, coincidentally uh, both are around the same configuration right so the first guy got a requirement to change this one second guy got a requirement to change uh, description let us imagine that but it gets 6 it gets 6 this is obviously 9 only so when i filter down both the update sets contain same customer update right now imagine you are pushing this update set first you're pushing update this update set first to production what do you see expect in the production uh, forget about all other records especially with specific to metric definition what do you expect you will see that it will be like this right it will be like this one and after that this was pushed after 10 minutes or one hour after 10 days this update set was pushed then in that you will see like this right which is fine but just imagine what happens as a ulta somebody is pushing this update set so it will be like this which is fine but after two days somebody is pushing this update set it will become like this right 
you understand what i'm trying to say let me know if it is not clear so i can give you a different example to, to make you understand better description and one is trying to change script right okay um, let us say uh, this guy is trying to change the script okay and this guy tries to change the description okay now uh, who did the first changes this guy only the script guy only did the first change so this guy updated it uh, 10 minutes ago this guy changed the description in last 2 minutes so the recent update in that particular uh, uh, particular metric definition was done by this v2.2 guy only okay so imagine this update set never go goes into production this only goes that is fine because this guy's update set contains uh, the updated script of uh, the first person as well as the uh, updated description of the second person correct clear clear with this point updated by person 2 okay this was updated by person 1 now updates at 1 updates at 1 goes to production means what will happen it will not capture the changes of person 2 it will only go uh, with the script changes it will not have description changes whereas updates at of person 2 goes to production what will happen it will also contain the script updated by person 1 also updated by person 2 right you understand right when somebody is doing a change and you go to that excel or uh, you have this uh, drive forms and all right in company also so one person is doing a change and after 10 minutes you do a change so it will say updated by you only but in fact uh, it will also contain the updates of the previous person it will not overwrite right but just imagine the ulta scenario um this person's update set goes first so which is absolutely fine it's a, it gets a short description it gets a description it gets a script everything copied perfectly as expected but after two days the person's one gets scripts gets to production what will happen person's one customer update does not contain any changes of the description it contains only script so script will go to production just like that but what whatever this person to did it in description it will not be captured right it will be overridden is that clear so these are uh, some crucial times like where there will be mismatch of data when two people are working on same development even if there is a difference between fraction of 10 seconds or 10 minutes or uh, 10 days doesn't matter the sequence of the update set should be very perfect now uh, in sprint and all if you have a jira in your company you will know in sprint and all people there will be 20 developers working on 100 update set like that right each of them working on five update set and every one month they will do a migration at that time just un i understand the volume of the up number of the update sets 100 update sets it is difficult to identify go to each and every record and see how uh, you know um, uh, vaishnavi and uh, shushmita worked on a same update set same customer update no it is difficult to identify then what is the best approach is to merge the update set right now you see that uh, this one has got how many updates six updates and this one has got nine right six plus nine uh, in which one of them is common one is common this is the scenario right now what you can do is you can take one any one update set just use the uh, merge with another update set option so you give a fresh name to it like july 16 uh, merged set set migration right so if you want to put some description you can put otherwise no problem here uh, you have to put up a filter setting name is is one of name is one of development activity next line is 
dev v2.0 right so you give the but you click on the button called merge are you sure you want to merge these two update sets you will not be able to undo the action i'm saying yes okay now let us jump into our merged update set july 16th how many do you see you see 14 uh, but technically uh, what did we count it as one minute so in related lists you can see what the merged update sets so you can see that 9 plus 6 what is 9 plus 6 it's 15 right but you see only 14 here why why do you think so i'll repeat again we took our count before merging we saw that in one update set it was 6 and other update set it was 9 so 9 plus 6 is 15 but in the merged merged update set i'm i'm seeing only 14 this is because there was one common update set so system will intelligently recognize which one is the latest update whichever is the latest update available in both of the update set only that will be taken right so in create to resolve duration you had two customer updates each one in one of the update set it took only the customer update which system considered it as latest then what happened to the one that had a previous version it was just left as such in the old update set this is your update set 1 this is v2.0 is your updated set 2 right so the one in the 2.0 is a fresh uh, recent update not fresh like recent update this one is comparatively to a con comparatively a older update so this was left in the uh, left in the existing update set as such and what whatever is the latest has been aged here now moving this update set merged one will you do you think will will cross a problem no it will not right because this one has a recent update only so this is not going to cause a problem so when you are handling with uh, pushing multiple update set or doing it as a batch as an admin or a developer whatever uh, 99% of the companies uh, make utilization of uh, making this uh, multi uh, you know merging of the update sets is that clear right now there's something called parent right um, so let us say this one i'm keeping parent as development activity for tsv2.0 also i'm keeping the parent as this so how parent works is let me mark it complete save do you see it no longer says it no longer says export update set see if i complete this one what it will say it will say that okay here it, it no longer tells you export update set whenever you know for a fact that whenever uh, uh, you uh, mark a status complete it will de uh, by default say as uh, export to xml right but here you can't see that and interestingly here you don't see export to xml instead you see a bigger word it said It says export updates at batch to XML. This means that this is a parent update set. Under this, you have how many uh, in this batch? You have three child update sets in this batch, right? So whenever you take an XML of one update set, whichever has marked this as a parent, every uh, every other customer updates will be automatically stored in this update set. This is the concept of ha having a parent mapping. any doubt with uh, why do we have a parent like i'll repeat again when you want to take an xml okay let us say this entire team is right now working on a workshop and uh, um, uh, uh, you know joshna we working on incident form layout uh, um, shushmita is working on um, uh, uh, you know client scripts and rahim is working on notification but everything is relevant to incident only so what i will do is i will create one update all of your 10 people or 9 people update set uh, i will go to each one of the update set and i will mark my update set as a parent 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 now i need not wait a minute yeah 
I need not take an XML backup of every single of your update set. Instead, that parent update set we created, right? I will take one uh, backup of export update set batch, only that much, and it will contain all the customer updates of. It will contain all the customer updates of all of your work. So this is basically to categorize stuff. You understand the difference between uh, having a parent and uh, how the merging of updates sets work, right? Any questions with that regard? Voice is not audible. Um, and I wasn't talking anything for the last five seconds. So I was asking if there is any question with the uh, whatever I've told now. No questions. All right. All right, so um, you need to understand what are the things that gets captured in updates here and what are not, right? So I told you any data, data as in like incident records, the records does not get captured in updates here. However, uh, the configurations like you change a component of a table, like uh, you change the dictionary entry label, you write a client script, write a business rule, you write a notification. Um, you change the maximum length of the dictionary entry all these gets captured right now how do we know uh, uh, you know how what are the things that gets captured and what are the things does not on a general context this is your understanding right the data does not gets captured the configurations gets captured but let us say you have a requirement you want some data also to be captured now how do you handle it in the system is yes. for every table for every table you do a rightly configure at that time you see something like this right uh, at that time uh, you have to look for a particular uh, column name every table will have one column which is always a column name empty it is default it will be created by the system and the type of that column name will say collection so this is something that will contain all the attributes that you need in that we have one of the attributes that goes by the name update sync table as an attribute called update sync map to it it will be captured if not it will not be captured as simple as that right so uh, i will show you an example now we have a proper update set so i will create a scheduled job schedule job table is in fact does not have an uh, um, update set uh, you know put on for it I will look at any existing, uh, you know, recent ones. Mm. 
okay i'll i'll just take up some random stuff okay this is on a different application right so there is one script uh let me it is just i uh, inactive only that's fine but i'll just change it from daily to weekly uh, so anybody should expect this update set to be captured in uh, uh, this update of mine should be captured in update set right it doesn't happen the reason is because we do not have um, update sync attribute put on the this table so let us say you have this requirement to change it what you can do is go to that specific table where updates are not getting captured do a right click configure all so what are we doing you're doing it for the whole sum of scheduled script execution table so there you see a lot of uh, dictionary entries you will have to focus on to the dictionary entry that says so you see three uh, three is because uh, this is the parent most table sys auto is the parent most table under that you have metadata and sys auto script <coughs> excuse <coughs> our requirement has to do only with sys auto script so i will choose this table wherein type is collection you can see that in attributes it says update sync is false right let me change this value to true okay i will put up my new attribute true and submit okay main main represent service now vendor so they're saying that any update sync uh, this thing cannot be updated by you unless done by main main means service now vendor so we have tried to add uh, update sync uh, custom to this let us see if this works otherwise what we might have to do is we have to delete this existing record through a background script and after that we will anyways have our update sync custom added to this so that going forward schedule job changes would be captured in the update set so i'm cha changing this to again on demand okay doing it save okay so now you could say that it gets captured in the update set you understand the difference right so let us say for user table user table is a data table typically it should not be captured in the update set and it is not encouraged but you have a special requirement that no no whatever things is there it should be captured in the update set then you have to do a right click on that table configure go to that collection dictionary entry and in the attribute uh, choose upon a new attribute called update sync custom adding that will make sure that that table becomes uh, becomes captureable by an update set so that is how you uh, you know uh, make this thing happen any uh, any clarifications or uh, questions one show it is uh, incident table example incident table is a uh, oh, okay incident table data is not ca uh, capturable but whatever configuration you do is capturable uh, so i go to incident dot list take me to a list of uh, incident records but whatever you do you would undo it why i am saying undo is every time you create an update you know you create an uh, incident uh, insert or every single update will be captured in the update set which, which is not right isn't it but just for demo let's do that not a problem 
I do a configure, right click configure and all. Okay, so here you filter down to the one that says collection. You could see task and incident reason is because we are an incident table. However, incident is inherited from task. So we want the stages to be done only for incident table. So let's open up this record. And in attributes, let us add a new attribute. Update sync custom. OK, and value is true. Save it. Now, um, I can just go and update any of my incident as in. Um, I'll just change the short description of this. Save this up. Incident and collection update sync custom true. Okay, it looks like an, another uh, you know restriction system does not allows you specifically for data related tables as in an incident or change table. So I'm trying to add a new attribute similar to how I did it in similar to how I did it in my uh, schedule job table, right? But even though I try to add, add multiple times, it doesn't get stored there. Let me check one more time. Okay, so the last captured update of mine is only on the auto script or job table. It doesn't get sent to anywhere else. So I can do a reverse of this and show it to you again. So I'm doing a, you know, update set uh, uh, this particular attribute false and saving it. Now, if I make any changes to my schedule job, it is back to the original version. Like it will no longer be captured in an update set. So in order to make this captureable in an update set, you will have to make sure we have an attribute called update sync custom and set the value to true. Getting back to a question, uh, looks like there's another, uh, uh, you know, restriction from the system. Uh, that system is uh, very well aware and uh, uh, not allowing uh, incidents and other uh, important big data data collection tables uh, not syncable, even though when we try to push an attribute. Clear any queries? And finally, I have this back out, uh, I know, back out section, which I need to explain in update sets. Mm, let me take you to any one of the existing update sets that we have. Okay, you have the update set called uh, July 16 merged, which is nothing but a merger of two update set and it's got 14 customer updates. So you moved it to production and in production you feel whole oh, like we have messed up. We want to undo whatever we want, right? Back out. They call it like undo as in back out. So if you want to back out all your configurations, you click on the button back out. 70% uh, of the time it only results in a failure due to some reasons, but 30% of the time it gives you successful result as in it properly backs out everything. So let us try to back out in personal instance. Let's see what it comes up with. Yeah. So as I told you, there's always a problem uh, when we try to uh, back out.
so it says there's a problem deducted and um, it says that there was one specific uh, okay we were trying to change the related uh, uh, list right so that related list configurations is also captured in this update set they're saying that after this update set is committed there were several other update sets or a default update set whatsoever due to which the same records were updated so it's giving us that clue so we are saying that um, so we are giving one of these answers no no keep whatever i have given now or use the previous ones or uh, choose the ones that is in future so we'll say use the one that was that is already in previous because the current ones i want to you know uh, back out anyhow so we have already given a decision to the system that for this particular error uh, we want to use the previous so uh, anyways it 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 will be successful in in uh, backing out other 13 customer updates let it let it uh, reload now you could see that that uh, that update set itself gets out of the system it will no longer be available in the system you remember we created something called july 16 you no longer see that update set in the update set list right you see only development activity v2.0 3.0 this is the one that uh, i was saying that it got hidden right like it got vanished because this entire thing itself got deleted because we did a backout why am i seeing it here is because this is not a refreshed form if i try to duplicate this tab it will say no record found right right so, so earlier why it was unable to back out uh, it told one error that that update set was containing four 14 cust among that 14 one of the customer update is about we were changing related list remember in incident we were adding metrics related list and all like we do right click configure related list and add things to the right and left and all so system is saying that um, okay this update set is not the latest we have many more update sets which has the update to this particular record right this is uh, system is saying that this is not the latest version for that specific customer update you have one more version in the now, other update set now tell me what you want me to do system Tim is asking us, like, tell me what you want me to do. So we said, oh, keep the previous version. There were four options given to us. Uh, we'll have to say either keep previous version or keep current version or keep uh, target version. So we decided and uh, we gave instruction to the system stating keep previous version. And after that, we again re-triggered the job of backing out. And at that time, it went from one to hundred. Like you saw that processing bar, right? And it was finally backed out. now whatever changes in this instance that i had done as part of that um, as part of that specific update set you will no longer be able to see in the system it all got wiped off like reverted in another language you can see it got reverted back to whatever the previous version was i'll tell you what is the use case uh, of this backout you will use in your uh, companies um there could have been update set moved to production it would have contained 100 up customer updates or something anyways you have a customer uh, sorry xml backup of that update set but uh, there is a p one going on and it has been identified that due to some changes done by the update set it could be one of those 100 records right 100 customer updates there is a p1 p1 as in that incident form itself is not visible for the entire global users when form itself is not visible for entire global users it is a p1 right um, something a very critical happened and uh, you were given like 20 minutes of time 30 minutes of time and still you could not find it so the best solution to this is back out that update set back out the entire batch so let it be as as such whatever it was one hour prior and it doesn't mean that all our work has been destroyed our work is still in the xml backup right we have already done taken xml backup 
it is there <coughs> we can redeploy this update set in another instance and uh, like a stage instance or a pre production instance there we can use it like a poc to you know casually sit in one hour and see how which has gone wrong identify that component fix it and then take it to production because production is not a place to debug and just wait and watch oh if i change this is it working if i change this is working right if there is a mess the management tells you hey back out everything let's do it again so we will back out it doesn't mean that your work is lost or anything anyways you have your uh, exported xml of your work uh, which is obviously available in your development test instance also in your computer laptop right uh, which you took a local xml backup so these are the scenarios where you would uh, use this concept of uh, backing up updates it's uh, um, you know as a bulk or a single component of updates it's any questions not regarding this uh, mm. i have sent you an image can you please mm. explain what should be written in the team's line okay as in have you sent in whatsapp yes okay i i will yeah i will um, take some 5 minutes break after the session and probably look at your message in whatsapp and uh, answer to that okay i later put a voice message sure. or something in whatsapp shouldn't be a problem all right guys anything else for on based on today's session all right so if that is the case just you know uh, please try and do some exercises around this and if there is any question just put me a whatsapp message i'll try to see how better i can ex so till now okay. we have completed uh, otherwise you still have uh, tomorrow session uh, right yeah we are on friday so next two days is uh, uh, we do not have any classes unless and until if you are interested and want anything but anyways we are taking two hour sessions right so we don't want weekend sessions so next two days spend time, time on uh, uh, practicing whatever we've learned on all these 14 chapters with that we will uh, you know on uh, july 19th we'll continue thank you guys thank you everyone for joining in happy weekend bye take care thank you bye bye everyone